ladies, gentlemen, am I often forgotten, but certainly not by me ancient scales. Welcome to the channel and welcome to another guide. Now in today's video we were supposed to be taking a look at melee ED2, however a bunch of new special attacks came out today for dragon weapons and they've all been reworked so I kind of want to take a deep dive into those maybe in another video or, or just kind of do them on stream and then kind of add that into the guide as I go. And I just so happen to have been doing a lot of hybrid ED1 recently so I figured today we'll take a look at hybrid ED1. Now I am going to be doing a more more general purpose hybrid DPS guide here in the upcoming future, mainly looking at the different uh, kind of general theory and some of the practicality behind it, because I've had a lot of requests to be doing uh, more hybrid content, specifically on explaining how hybrid DPS works in kind of more of a general sense, as well as showcasing it at different bosses and whatnot, so, and so that'll be tossed into the mix of videos coming up as well. Anyways, that's enough rambling, let's go ahead and get into this guide. Alrighty, this is the preset that I use for a hybrid setup at ED1. Now at first glance, this looks like an absolutely ridiculous preset with way too many switches in it, and there's just a bunch of items kind of strewn all over the place, kind of randomly, and there's barely any food, and it looks borderline impossible to use in any sort of effective manner at ED1. However, when you break it down into its individual components and look at it one piece at a time, it'll start to make a lot more sense, and it's much easier to digest. So first off, why would anyone want to hybrid in the first place? Why would you bring an entirely separate combat style at all when one combat style works perfectly fine? Well, the main idea with Hybrid is that Death Swiftness, Sunshine, and Berserk, they do not share cooldowns at all. Uh, if you had Infinite Adren, you could press Sun on one global cooldown, Death Swiftness on the next global cooldown, and Berserk on that third global cooldown in a row. They do not share them at all, and you could just press them back to back if you wanted. Which has a few advantages, being that the cooldown time for each ultimate is one minute long. Now, being that these cooldowns are one minute long and they only last either 37 seconds for Sunshine or Death Swiftness and 26 seconds for Berserk, uh, you have to wait a quite a long time in order to be able to use the ultimate ability again. And so on a single camp style, this is where things like EZK or ZGS would come into play for melee or for magic, you just kind of threshold it out in between Sunshines or in Range's case, sometimes people will go for like a dead shot with another EC be going or maybe something else along those lines to kind of fill up that in-between time of waiting for your ultimate ability to come off cooldown. Thus kind of born out of that dilemma is where hybrid came into play, being that you could save a little bit of adrenaline on one of your ultimates and not do a like full adren dump to get as much damage out per as possible on that ultimate, but instead save up the adrenaline to then use another combat style's ultimate ability in that little bit of filler space. So ultimately, you are doing more damage per minute because you are almost always under some type of ultimate ability. So with that concept fresh in your mind, now we can look at the preset with a new lens and really see its components. Being that it is just kind of the basic parts of magic and melee wrapped into one preset. On the magic side, we just have our dual wield and our 2H weapon. It is just the same as always as if it was a magic camp preset. There is a Karoming swap there just to take advantage of G-Chain as in Elite Dungeons that is very helpful for getting a lot of AoE damage out, and it's just a standard armor set with Cinder Banes. Now Cinder Banes are hybrid gloves so you can use it with any combat style and it'll work the same as always. Now on the melee side of things, there are a lot of switches here omitted and you could omit more switches if you wanted. In a more traditional hybrid preset, you would omit something like EZK EOF and the glove swap as you're probably not going to be doing too many bleeds, although dismember is still a very strong basic, especially when you bring the glove swap, so that one is kind of a toss-up. However, specifically in ED1, it does help out with the uh, Siru rotation that I do, which is slightly unorthodox, but it makes one cycle pretty much 100% consistent, so that's why I bring it. And the scythe is there for the same reason that we would bring the melee swap in the first place, being that each combat style has a set number of AoE abilities or area of effect abilities 
abilities that can attack multiple targets with one ability. And when you're doing something like and when you're doing something like Elite Dungeons, the more the better for doing all of the damage that you can do. As Hurricane and Quake don't share cooldown with each other, and they don't share cooldowns with any of the other combat styles AoEs, as far as I can tell. So for instance, with magic, say you use a detonate and release it with an auto and a D breath or something like that, you could then swap over to your melee set and then go in for a quake and hurricane to finish off any mobs that might still be there after the deto rotation. Again, it's one of those things you can kind of play by ear, but it is very nice in a hybrid sense being that you have access to more abilities to make more unique rotations and to basically make the dungeon run even more consistent. Now being that hybrid, you're bringing an entire second combat style to swap into for some abilities. There are some drawbacks with this. Mainly, there's a lot of switches in your inventory and there's not much space for food. Now, luckily in ED1's case, with food usage, you shouldn't be going through a whole lot even with Masuda, being that magic is pretty good at maintaining high HP with autocast blood barrage. And the few places that Berserk is used in the dungeon, you're not going to be taking too much damage anyway. So overall, food usage is very low at ED1 if you just use a few defensive abilities here and there, such as Devotion. Being that magic also benefits greatly from Calgarian Demon, I go ahead and use that. And melee also benefits from Calg, being that crits are almost always big boy hits that are hitting well into the 15k range and beyond. So the more of those, there's always the better. And then and everything else is kind of standard practice as far as ED1 is concerned. Dominion Mines are there for uh, Sirius Crystals, and Lang Swords do affect them as we discussed in the Melee ED1 guide. So 13k Mine Hits are always welcomed. The Acceleration Potion is just for zooming through some of the uh, more distant parts of the run, mainly after the three mages you have to kill with the three rangers, uh, just after Sanctum Guardian, that run around that little uh, kind of pool area that's like in an octagon or a circle shape. And just before Sanctum, with all of the R hats around, it's nice to use a pot there. And Lucky Charm, just for trying to get a little bit of extra GP during your dungeon runs. Now, just as I've said in all my other Elite Dungeon videos, Luck of the Dwarves is just there because I don't want to take the risk of getting a Cheese and Tomato Bada. Hopefully, at some point, we see a little rework on the Luck of the Dwarves Relic to not be nearly as costly. Because remembering to swap rings is always a pain for me, especially when trying to manage two combat styles. However, it is nothing that you can't manage with a little bit of practice. Grim also happens to be a very good hybrid pocket slot because more crits is more damage and Grim is what kind of made melee really good way back when. When Grim got its change after Soul Black release, melee was honestly the only combat style that could really take advantage of the hit cap offering with, and it really put melee on top of the game for burst damage for a long time, and it's still pretty much there as far as burst damage is concerned. And then the rune pouches are just the standard PVME rune pouch setup, so you have all the spells that you need access to on Ancients and can spellbook swap for any other spells that you might want. So as you can see, once you break a hybrid preset down into its individual components and kind of understand the pieces of what makes it tick, when you look at it in a bigger picture, it suddenly makes a lot more sense. And as always, I'm running the same relics that I always do at pretty much every Every single encounter, which is Conservation of Energy, Death Ward, and Fury of the Small. The extra Adren gain is very nice for both combat styles, and Death Ward is very nice for taking as little damage as possible. And my relics will pretty much stay like this until some update in the future happens, and maybe changes relic power, or gives us additional relic power, but until then, this is what they're gonna be. Anyways though, I think that's enough rambling, but hopefully those explanations helped you understand hybrid presets a little bit better. But let's go ahead and get into that example run. All righty, we have our preset loaded up and ready to go. Just get some adrenaline and head on into the instance. Now, I just like to use Majrat Aura since it boosts both combat styles. Uh, you can use Invigorate if you want, but uh, Maj usually seems to be the best. Turn on the Grim and let's get started. I like to search down this hallway and click on this little line in the stairs so I can surge bladed dive over to this tile here and then I like to G chain into an Omni and target this guy here for a D breath and then just kill whatever is left with some basics and then surge bladed dive 
surge again and then barge this dude over here and run under and do a G chain charge up a detonate and release with tsunami usually kill all of them except this corner guy here went ahead and popped freedom there just so these guys don't instant stun and then I just run back on the center line here to get these guys into a nice uh distance and then I like to Wake Hurricane here. Since we have the melee style, we should just take advantage of its AoEs and then surge down into the door. Swap back over to Mage, hit Anticipate, and then install a G-Chain on this guy and release it when you're in range and then use Omni Overpower. I mean Omni Power. I always get the names confused. And these guys, I'll just use like maybe a uh, Corrupt Blast or something. Maybe sometimes I'll put a Magma Tempest over there. And then just kill off this guy with maybe a threshold. And on this tile to get the aggro of all of them. And then that'll bring him into a nice little shape for a detonate. G-chain, detonate, charge and release. And then it's surge. Uh, one of them didn't want to die, so just give him a little bit of extra assistance. And then here, I like to bladed dive surge. And then drink the acceleration potion to refresh, refresh bladed dive. And then just blade a dive into position down here. And devotion before you target this guy so it doesn't use any adrenaline. And then just use a couple G chain, or use a couple ice racks, I should say, and a G conch here and there and just kill off these guys. And run into this instance a little bit, surge, blade a dive over to this tile. And then I toss, I put my ring on, toss Vuln Bomb with Sun, and then target cycle with a. Smoke Cloud into a G-Conk Deep Breath. Third basic. Auto Tsunami into a Staff Spec. And this is just kind of a standard uh, AB. A standard FSOA rotation at this point. Go ahead and hit Omni. We have a bunch of Adren, so I'll just start ABSing. Didn't get much Adren there. Probably because I didn't use... Oh, I did use my Calg. Was just an unlucky ABS. Tendies, maybe another ABS. Maybe another one. Rack and Ruin. Wild Magic is Fix. Plant the uh, smoke down there. And what I like to do here, just for fun since we have it, go in for a Zerk and Barge. We have Disrupt Shield for this hit, so I'll just go ahead and Bleed Assault. Oh, didn't get the Bleed. Maybe do a Freedom Main Hand 2H into a Hurricane. And the boss is dead. Put on magic and then go through the door. Put my luck of the doors back on. Up over to inside fear again if I can click. And then here I just surge bladed dive. Surge across and then use corrupt blast into an auto D breath and then G conk on this guy and he should be dead. Preemptively put on range prayer, surge across, hit devotion and then surge bladed dive the next tick. Charted charge a detonate in front of this guy, release it with a D breath and an auto attack, and aftershock procced there nicely to kill off the rest of the damage needed. And here's the second place I like to power burst. Now sometimes you won't you'll uh, kill Sanctum really fast and you won't be able to power burst through there. Just uh, use it when you can and kind of surge bladed dive accordingly. I like to search through there, click on this tile here and then bladed dive to this tile to get across. And just use a Corrupt Blast here, and then this one will usually separate, so you can use maybe something like a Deep Impact on him. And Ice Rack this guy with a D Breath. And there he's dead. Put on your Bladed Dive Swap. Surge Bladed, da no, surge bladed Dive next to this Zealot here, and then I like to Corrupt Blast on this guy. Target the one in the middle of the line of five, and release that with an Auto O and a Tsunami. D Breath the far one. And then if this one's still alive, then you can just... Use a couple basics and you should die. Now here I like to anticipate. G chain into an asphyx. And maybe a basic should be able to kill them and then surge down. That oh, looks like my blessed last ran out. Oh well, should be fine. These guys I like to ice barrage from here. And kill. And then I like to surge blade a dive to this tile. Wait for this guy to come over, and then G-Chain, Omni, 
and then charge a Ditto with a uh, D-Breath release, and then you can use Quake and Hurricane to finish off anything else. Back to your Magic Swap, and you're off to the races. Surge Bladed Dive around to avoid the Ranger, and just use Corrupt. Maybe a Magma Tempest and some other AoEs like D-Breath. And what I'd like to do is surge down from this tile, and then here, put on melee, put on the ring, and then from here I like to surge bladed dive, TC with a smoke cloud into a sun, a pot, and then just uh, triple basic, and then tsunami, and then staff spec, and I go to blood barrage for Masuda. And then as soon as he starts a spin. You just uh, go ahead and use what abilities you need. Or, I mean, Devotion. And do not EBS while he's doing the spin animation. It will walk it and then uh, cause you to cancel it. Save your ABSs for after the uh, little spin attack. And before you know it, he'll be phased, because magic damage OP. Now this right here, not having my Bless Flask filled, that is precisely why I use um, Salves still, because they have Prayer built into them, so in emergencies you can just go ahead and overload again, and you should be fine. You can kind of use it as an emergency prayer potion, like in the middle of a kill or something. With these Thrashing Waters, I just usually basic them, and if you stand next to them uh, while you kill them, if you stand melee distance, this percentage will build up, and that is a damage reduction on the next phase. So if you're getting absolutely destroyed in the next phase, if you do this mechanic properly, you will take significantly less damage. Now the rule of thumb for this boss is about a minute and 10 to a minute and 20 seconds. That's about uh, the time length of this phase. So whatever uh, second you finished on, so for me I think I finished on 32. So we're right in that range to where he's probably going to start uh, the phase soon. I think we'll probably get one more Thrashing Water. Yeah, we got one more. I'll go ahead and start a Sun here in the center. Oh, we got an additional one. Okay. It'll be two range attacks and the magic... Then Tsunami, Staff Spec, pop a Disrupt Shield if you can. And just go out here off to the races. Now, you can summon your Familiar if you're standing on the steps here, but you can't summon him for whatever reason if you're not on the steps. It's one of those weird boss instance things that just doesn't make sense, but it is what it is. And here I usually just Soul Split just fine. If you have to Pray Flick, feel free. And before you know it, the boss is dead. Just in case, I'll put my Luck of the Dwarves back on and I like to Surge Blade Dive over. Swap to my Melee Swap and then hit Devotion. Attack the middle one, kill it as soon as possible to get your Devotion extension. And on here, I like to do a Basic, a Lang Spec, and then kill the last one off with some Basics. Run over, Bladed Dive my ring back on, hit Zerk, Surge, and then Bladed, or er, Barge, double basic, with a Vuln Bomb down, and hit Bleed Assault, a basic, Overpower into a Hurricane, and then I usually hit G Fury, free to main hand 2H auto, and a Destroy. Also, you can swap over to Insight Fear while you're on melee. And here, I like to Chaos Roar into an easy K, just to make this part a little bit faster. Forgot to put my Havoc gloves on, but it's no big deal. And just build back up to 100%. Because you're not going to be Zerking this next part. What I like to do is swap back over to Magic at some point, and build up a couple Insight stacks. And then Surge over to, or Blade a Dive over to the Climb spot once he hits 7.2 and climb up. And here I'll target with a Vuln Bomb, use a Bleed, place down Mines, start a Sunshine, and drink an A-Pot. And then it's just kind of a standard 
rotation from here. Now, what you're supposed to do is hit your Calg before you go up, but I forgot to do that, so is what it is. We'll just play with what crits we get. I should not have tendies there. That was a mistake. But I'll hit Omni Power here, maybe into some ABSs. Getting some decent adrenaline return. Now for the sake of this guide, I'm not going to go for a fast one cycle. This is just for consistent kills. And so what I'll do here is uh, just kind of build back up to 100, make sure a smoke cloud is down, swap over to melee and get to 120 adren. Hit my lang spec, one more basic, toss the vuln bomb and anticipate. Wait for the first two ubers, one, two, zerk, barge, dismember, put on my havoc gloves and havoc and then bleed assault with the mines. Hit a basic, overpower, into a hurricane, and it should be dead. And there you go. So as a little recap for Siru, um, to get a consistent, I usually end up doing a mid uh, two flat, so anywhere from two minutes flat to two ten second, kind of that bracket of time. Uh, as far as one cycles are concerned, that's the time bracket I'm usually in with this rotation. There are people who can probably do consistently faster in the 150s or even 140s. However, I find it much easier to just Zerk and then possibly Easy K, or if you don't have an Easy K, you could easily uh, ZGS. And that would work just fine. You know, Zerg ZG as the head or Zerg EZK the head, whatever your preference is. And then just build up, to make sure you're at 100% and then use your Calc spec before you come up. And then Sunshine will always nuke these first two crystals, even with some of the uh, less than favorable crit patterns that you might get on a Sunshine. It will more than easily kill off these two crystals before the little blobs will come up and start doing their uber heals, which will give you enough time to then swap back over to melee and build up a lang spec and make sure you have your smoke cloud and vulnbob on the third crystal to then go ahead and do a zerk rotation. Now, the rotation that I use here is pretty much identical to the one I did in my melee ED1 guide for the third crystal. So you wait for the two ubers, you then count out two ticks, press zerk, and then you can barge. And I like to do dismember and then with the havoc gloves on hit havoc so that bleed damage is already ticking through. Um, once the uber heals are done, it'll still be going after that with the uh, duration that the spear can give you. And then it's just a uh, bleed assault basic into an overpower hurricane and then if you need to do more damage after that you can go ahead and press your limitless into destroy and overall i have done probably four or five hours so far of this method and as soon as i swapped over to this method for siru i pretty much have not missed a one cycle since uh, there was one where i literally uh, min hit quite literally everything on a zerk and it was a botched zerk rotation because i messed up on some of the other parts and it didn't hit but every single other time i've done a one cycle and as you can see included in this run i managed to get another one so one cycle is consistent if you are doing hybrid if you have any questions though about say my keybind setup as you can see i have my no board set up here and what i am doing for hybrid switching is I do have all of my thumb buttons. I explain this in my keybind guide. I will leave a link in the description in the below, and I will put a card up in the upper right hand corner of this video to that keybind guide. But all I am doing is just holding down shift or control and then just mashing my thumb into the side of my mouse, covering all eight of the buttons. And that's how I'm doing a switch. So I just hold control, roll through all of them and that's how I'm doing it. And I have them all set up here to where, you know, it's control plus all my thumb buttons or shift plus all my thumb buttons. That's how I do hybrid switching. Uh, there's other ways to do it. Uh, some people really like clicking from the inventory or something like that. That's not my favorite style. I've always struggled with it. But anyways, do what's best for you. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, currently, I am investigating uh, potential uses of specs for Siru and ED1 in general. I might be doing an update to the Melee ED1 guide since they came out. 
but uh, that is all still in the works right now. I'm still trying to kind of figure out a few things with how they work and whatnot and how they'll fit into uh, Zerk and non-Zerk rotations and whatnot. So stay tuned for that one. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and roll that outro. Ladies, gentlemen, and I did not forget about you ancient scales. Thank you very much for watching the video. Your viewership is always appreciated. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, night time, whatever it is, wherever you are. And I will see you next time for the next guide. Peace.